Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at 284 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, and of course, our partners that hold us down, I'm Ron Grant. Welcome to a brand new season of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Don't worry, it doesn't always involve suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. Thank you all for taking this journey with me. In this season, we take you on an entirely different journey. From chefs to dancers, construction experts, we're heading outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BVI's best and brightest. From East End to West End, Virgin Gora, of course, Anagata and Joss Van Dyke, our Virgin Island gentlemen, are doing the damn thing, and I'm so proud. Today, we take a journey over to one of my favorite islands in the BVI, Virgin Gora. As a matter of fact, I, I love Virgin Gora so much. Uh, this is a, a, a truth moment. I used to skip school. At, at one point and go over to Virgin Gora and I guess you we call it plain hooky but <laughs> that's just how amazing Virgin Gora is we are talking to the one and only chef Arik Flax one of the best and brightest and I mean a genuine good old soul uh, he is today's guest and we are talking about the culinary experience hospitality really thriving in, in the rapid uh, changing times of the Virgin Islands and really speaking to Virgin Islands culture I'm so honored and so proud to have him we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors brilliant hands and minds tutoring services one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English intense homework assistance academic enrichment school projects effective communication and public speaking development sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only registered with the Virgin Islands high school certificate program brilliant hands and minds can help you too offering intense curriculum based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma it's time to make your family's education a number one priority hurry space is limited brilliant hands and minds learning center we are the trained education professionals viewers welcome back we are here with the one and only Arik Flax the talented chef uh, that is Arik uh, thank you so much and welcome to the art of a distinguished gentleman thank you so much for having me cheers That was a true story, by the way. I used to skip school, mm -hmm. uh, go to Virgin Gora at the bats, and yeah. You used to bring anybody with you? Or you just um, used to go by yourself? I'm the reporter, I'm asking the questions. <laughs> 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 so we're gonna leave that right there. Um, and I reckon it was the opposite for you guys. Yes. You guys probably used we, to We always you. used to try to get into total of for various mm -hmm. reasons, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we Absolutely. can't speak about that today. We wouldn't talk about that today. <laughs> You are one of the Virgin Islands leading professionals, and you are making leaps and bounds when it, as it pertains particularly to the um, culinary and hospitality industry. Mm. You are uh, a Virgin Gordian at heart, <laughs> um, and, and I can't speak for you, but I would assume that even when it comes to hospitality, you really didn't choose hospitality, but ch hospitality chose you. Yes, hospitality uh, did choose me, definitely. Based on your family and your upbringing. Tell yep. us about growing up in that type of environment. Um, well, for me, it was always fast paced. Um, knowing my mom, she's very energetic mm -hmm. at some times, but um, surrounded by amazing chef are surrounded by amazing people my grandmothers who are both talented chefs mm -hmm. um uh, norma flack she passed away uh, a couple of years ago and she was the one who taught uh like majority of some of the chefs in virgin mm -hmm. as we know today so it's like is, as you say, I was just thrown mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. And my mom always tells me a story. When I was little, that's when she knew I wanted to be into culinary. Is because I used to wake up in the middle of the night and she would hear like pots and pans wow. going off. And she would um, whisper to my stepdad and say, you know, maybe someone is in the house. Mm -hmm. um, but Behold, it was only me doing up a little pot in the middle of the night nice, nice. just to eat something nice. because um, 
that was one thing that attracted me to it too is just tasting different varieties of food like i totally love food and in the culinary world you have to taste everything i agree no matter if it's uh might be disgusting to mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. but you still have to try it regardless what's the so, most enjoyable part for you about being a chef i would say it's the interaction with different people okay. uh, food connects literally everyone so just creating a, a spectacular dish can really make you network with a lot of different people. Um, during my time as a chef, like I've traveled to various different states, New York, California. Um, it has a couple more, but I can't. Yeah. Miami, of course. But it's like you meet so much people. It's like your opportunities are endless because people, as I say, food connects people. And that's, that's the, um, the, the true thing I would say about being in the culinary industry. Wonderful. Now, Virgin Gorda is known as the uh, as musical city uh, <laughs> or, or music city, whichever. Mm -hmm. But personally, I do believe that Virgin Gorda, out of all the islands in the British Virgin Islands, is the single island that really encapsulate service and hospitality. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Virgin Gordians and the beautiful people that work at a number of the facilities uh, do it with pride, elegance, and dignity. And I'm not sure why that is. Why do you think that is? Why has Virgin Gorda set itself apart, or how has Virgin Gorda been able to set it, itself apart uh, as really uh, the hospitality mecca and service industry uh, of the BBI? Um, well, I would say it's because I, I, I don't want to get into the, the Tato land Virgin Gorda. Of course, we can, we're not going to do that today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to me, Virgin Gorda, Tato is the city life. You come to Tato, you would be able to make a lot of financial decisions. You can, you can, um, good startup companies here. Mm -hmm. Virgin Gorda to me is more of a relaxation kind of place. So I think. In a sense, it's like Virgin Garda is a place to get away from the reality of what Tortola is. More fast-paced, more going, always going. Mm -hmm. In Virgin Garda, you can relax, you can have drinks literally anywhere, food, good food anywhere. And just the ambience, I think the ambience is something that um, gives Virgin Garda that edge as it pertains to hospitality. Okay. Not a lot of moving paths. Everything is always not stagnant, but um, efficient enough for people to actually come down from reality just a little bit. I understand. You know, sometimes in life we have to simmer mm -hmm. just a bit, you know, mm -hmm. just to get away from the craziness of what the wall is going through. Beautiful. So, you have set yourself apart as a culinary uh, master in the British Virgin Islands, of course, working alongside the tourist board. Um, you do a lot of beautiful, intimate events uh, mm -hmm. that would really allow persons to I experience something intimately in their homes. Um, when you look at young professionals like yourself, leading young professionals, what encouragement would you give to them as it pertains to stepping out on faith, uh, taking a leap of faith, but really and truly just believing in craft? What, what encouragement would you give? Because you wear it very well. I would say to up and coming, anybody who's up and coming entrepreneurs, um, it's best to not limit yourself. Never limit yourself. Don't ever say, well, okay, I already have this going on. I can't do. Hmm anything else besides this. To me, this is what makes um, people lacking the limits that they could actually reach. Um, I myself had to go through that phase. I, I went through that phase during when COVID had just hit. Yeah. Because I was in Miami for school. I was just finishing up my schooling in Miami and had to come back home. During that time at home, I even though I'm truly passionate about culinary, love it to the bone, mm -hmm. 
but I, I realized that, you know, it's not all about just cooking. Mm -hmm. There's different aspects to it to dive into. I had to take um, risk. Risk is always good and bad, but it would always be good to try mm -hmm. instead of not trying at all, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that came out of me stepping out of my comfort zone. So that's one of the things I would preach to a lot of young and upcoming entrepreneurs and even, even the older entrepreneurs, step out of your comfort zone. I love it that. would always be best to take that risk and know that you took it instead of not doing anything at all. I appreciate that and I absolutely love that piece of advice. A step out of step your comfort out zone. Of your comfort Beautiful. zone. Beautiful. What are you most proud of uh, in being a Virgin Islander? <laughs> I would say I'm proud that um, even though we're a small, tight knit community, it shows that we, even though we're small, mm -hmm. that we have power. We have a lot of assets here that we can build on. We have um, a lot of good infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And here, to me, the Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands to be in particular, mm -hmm. is a place where you can do a lot of startups and build new trends and see if it would work here. Because I feel doing it here, um, is more challenging because Absolutely. you know BVI people, they they finicky about so they yeah, yeah you you you're it's, being very polite. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for them to mm -hmm. to come on to something, but once they on, it's like wow, you see so much um, community support. That's that's something I would say I'm proud of to be a British Virgin Islander. You get a lot of support from various people, even though they mightn't even know you in person, they would yeah, give you yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. support that you would need. And you're absolutely right because people, uh, I think, underestimate how difficult it is uh, not only to be living in the BVI, but mm -hmm. to uh, really uh, create a niche, uh, a business, whatever it yeah. is. Uh, you hear all the time, oh, if you can make it, uh, let's take, for example, New York. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. But if you can make no. it in the BVI, you got something special exactly. because uh, Arik <laughs> mentioned, what's the word you said? Finicky. 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 Uh, right. Uh, it's a tough crowd. It's, yes. it's a tough crowd. You it's, know? Re it's really a tough crowd to attract yeah. to different um, trends that you want to start up. But the but confidence. Once you have that confidence, once you have that um, drive to go for it and stick to it, then the crowd will start to come they would start to attract to you and see that, okay, this is something that I could support, yeah, yeah. you know? So Absolutely. That's, that's one thing I would say to answer your question is the constant support of the British Virgin Islanders. Beautiful. You are a distinguished gentleman. Uh, cool, calm, uh, always collected, <laughs> uh, always composed. When you look at examples uh, throughout your life of distinguished gentlemen and who you have become as a young man. Uh, is there anyone, and it could be male or female, it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. specific to um, a male example. Is there anyone that you would credit uh, some of your, your, your positive attributes to? Um, there's a lot. Good. <laughs> Tell there's, us about There's that. a lot. Um, for staff, I would say my mom, being the person that she is, she is very... Um, She's a powerful woman, you I know? Agree. She, she has a mindset, and once she stick to that mindset, that's what she would do. The only thing that would restrict her from going along that path is if she isn't getting the assets that she needs. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, she's always self-driven. And that's something she, growing up, she gave a lot of tough love Okay. which is something that I think every individual needs, you know, to understand that the wall isn't uh, it's just sunshine and rainbows, you know. So that's one thing I would give her credit for giving me, um, to understand that everything doesn't come easily. Mm -hmm. um, also, 
my stepdad, very music oriented. And he has pushed me through like a lot of my um, experiences, always supporting. And yeah, nice. <laughs> that's all I would say for, for him for now. It has a lot of big um, in the culinary, in, culinary leaders in the BVI that I've worked under. Um, some like uh, Henry Prince, he's now at Bitter End. Uh, Neil, mm -hmm. it has Kenneth Malinus, uh, Imran, Clint, um, Chef Gorvi. Mm -hmm. Literally, I've, I've worked with so many, beautiful, beautiful. so many individuals. It's like, and uh, all of them happen to, to be men that you've just yes, mentioned. Uh, yes. Yeah, leading professionals within the, yes. in, within the industry. A lot of them really push me to a different level of understanding what food actually is mm -hmm. and how it can be um how it can be different you know some people might just think of like let's say for instance a dukana we that's something that we enjoy all the yeah. time especially depending on the season yes but these guys would look at it and be like you know how can i transform this even though i take the same necessary steps and methods to do it how can i change it so that's the way they made me start thinking how can i change not change culture but change the way we look at culture how we present culture through food yeah so these guys i've worked with some of them for years work with some of, even though some of them i only work for in certain instances mm -hmm. But I can tell that they were really passionate about what they do. Beautiful. And next one um, that I looked up to from since I was in high school was um, a guy known by Chef Digby. He's from St. Croix. Okay. And what a guy. Mm -hmm. Knows his stuff. Been around the world numerous times. And him himself, been here to the British Virgin Islands, love the energy, love the kind of food that he puts together mm -hmm. and mixtures that he does is just phenomenal, Beautiful. you know? So I like sticking within the, the cultures of the Virgin Islands I understand and I realize. What is your favorite Virgin Islands cuisine to eat? I have a couple, <laughs> but I'd like to hear what, what, what some of your favorite uh, Virgin Islands foods are. Um, I wasn't really a big fungi and fish guy mm. but after i did it for myself i created it how i wanted to do it i would say now fish and fungi is one of the top for me with the mayonnaise sauce with the mayonnaise sauce beautiful nice. um dukana for sure okay that's the next one yeah um and i love a good johnny cake mm. It can be too dense, can be too light, but it should have a little sweetness and salt mm -hmm. to it. Okay. Like, I like a good Johnny cake. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Every distinguished gentleman, Eric, uh, should uh, have a little bit of an understanding around uh, the kitchen. In hindsight, um, well, hindsight is twenty twenty. Uh, mm -hmm. What's next for Eric? Well, there's a lot going on right now. Um, as I mentioned before, um, when I came back from college, I started to realize that there's more to just culinary. When you do something for a number of years, because I've been, I've been cooking from since I was probably 12 years old. I'm 23 mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. When you cook, well, I'm still young in the game, <laughs> but to me, when you cook for that long, um, it's not that you get bored of it, but you want to... You want to evolve where you are at that very moment, yeah. you know? So instead of continue, continuously doing the same thing, um, you can try to go into a different realm of food. So currently what I'm doing now, um, I'm invested in bees. So cool. we have in Virgin Garda, me and my partner, Janai Carl, a very, um, very well known in the farming and agriculture industry. 
of the BVA and very knowledgeable as a mm. young man. Uh, I learned a lot from him during my time working with him. And the only reason I, I got into bees and honey and stuff like that is because I wanted to do um, something with it, okay. which, I, which I can't say at Understood. the very moment. Okay. But it's like, at first, as I say, you have to jump into these things. You can't just be like, oh, you know, I'll just buy my stuff from abroad and bring it in. When we have these things here, we can utilize these things here. So I got in contact with him because I seen a post that he put up about honey. And I was just like, I never even knew mm -hmm. that we had honeybees here. I never knew that. So I, I went to him. Me and him had a chat. Now, um, that was like six months ago. And now we, we've established a business called Humble Buzz Honey Walks. Love it. So our goal would be to literally provide the BVA with honey. Our goal is not to, well, the, the grocery stores and whoever else can still bring in honey from wherever they would want to. But we would want that to come to an end because we have that. We have what um, they're bringing in from outside. And if it's produced locally, that makes it all the better because a lot of people now are trying to stay away from the sugars and mm -hmm. the different um, corn sugars and syrups and stuff like that when they could have a natural source of honey locally made, you know? So that's one venture that I'm in. And that's right exciting now. and I'm happy to hear about it because I think it is, um, it's unique. Yeah, um, it really, it's, it's it really cool. is. Like when, once, when you're in it, when you're surrounded by the bees, it's actually comforting. And bees have, bees produce so much things that um, is healthy for you that you wouldn't even believe how much things that they could, they are capable of. Well, we have something in common because I used to do a little bit of beekeeping in, oh, wow. uh, in college, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a really good venture and I, I don't regret any minute of it Beautiful. because I, I can see what it can become. Amazing. You know, um, other than that, um, I have my catering business, Flax and Co. Catering Services. Um, I've been holding off on it for a while because I want to experience everything else that I wasn't doing, which is dealing with bees, the actual food production of things. Okay. Um, instead of just cooking, I, I, I'm starting to venture off into that space of knowing where the food comes from, knowing how it's produced. Understood. Um, so that's also one of my ventures at the moment. Um, it has a couple more, but I, I don't know if I, I am able to speak on it at I the understand. very moment. Well, Arik, we are extremely proud of you. Um, we thank you so much for uh, uh, coming uh, on set and sharing your journey. Continue doing uh, what you're doing. Um, as I always say, keep doing the damn thing. Uh, yes. Because we are, <laughs> no, we truly are. And I think you are a shining example of not only a distinguished gentleman, but a young uh, professional uh, who has created, uh, uniquely created uh, an identity for yourself within uh, the field. And we are proud of you. Continue it. And uh, viewers, that is all the time we have. We were here with the one and only uh, Mr. Arik Flax. See you next week.